So I first want to present the team model to help you understand the relationship between the core elements of a team and the role of team leader. Your leadership role, by the way, can't be defined in a vacuum. It's defined by your relationship with your team. And so I want to begin with a basic understanding of team, staff, work group, whatever you happen to call yourselves. So here's a diagram that illustrates the most important elements of a team or a work group. Notice the three parts. It begins with charter, which describes why the team exists, and it includes such elements as your vision, your purpose or mission statement, your values, your goals. Second element of a team is design, which describes what your team actually does and how it organizes itself to accomplish its mission. And this includes things like the core work processes, the methods and tools of your team, structure or roles and responsibility, how you organize people to accomplish your work. It includes technical procedures and norms and systems that support your team in doing its work and so on. The third element of a team is relationships. This is about how your work culture or climate go, as well as how people work together or, you know, to accomplish their mission. And it includes things like trust and respect and cohesion, collaboration, communication, management of conflict, and so on. Well, I found this model can be applied to any type of team or work group and any type or size of organization. We could apply it to a fast food restaurant, to a call center, to a production line in a manufacturing company, to a dental or medical staff, or the staff of a government agency, a professional services company, a small retail business, or I've used it often even with C-level leaders in a large corporation. The three elements of a team apply anytime you have a group of people who are interdependent and share a common mission. Notice that as I talk about team, I'm not talking about, or as I talk about these elements, I should say, I'm not talking about vision and goals and for the whole company, but rather for the entity as a team. Of course, I could have used other words in place of these three words. Uh, that other words that would have had a similar meaning, for example, strategy and systems and culture, you know, fit those three circles, or vision and organization and climate and so on. In fact, in some of my work with other people at other levels of the organization, I do use these terms, but for our purpose, I'll stick with charter design and relationships. So we'll be looking at this model in more detail in future le lectures, but for now, what I want you to do is a high-level assessment of your team. And again, when I say your team, you're a member of two teams, that which you lead and the team of your, uh, your peers who report together to your manager, your boss. You might also be a member of other ad hoc or informal teams as well. You can apply the model to any and all of these teams, but most important for our purposes is the team that you lead. I want to give you a few minutes to do a high-level assessment of the team that you lead by jotting down some bullet points, the first thoughts that come to your mind about your team's charter. You might write down some of the elements of your charter or share some thoughts like, our mission is very clear, or our mission is not very inspiring, or people don't understand our overall goals, or we have well-defined values that govern our behavior, or I'm not even sure what good values would look like. Whatever thoughts come to your mind, they could be good, bad, they could be, you know, strengths or weaknesses of your team, whatever bullet points, whatever thoughts come to your mind. And then I'd like you to do the same thing with your team's design or organization. You know, how well are you organized to carry out your work? How does the organization help or hinder you in achieving your goals and so on? Anything that comes to your mind again. And finally, how would you characterize the work climate and the relationship between members on your team? I don't want you to spend too much time at this point. We'll be talking more about these three areas later, and you'll come away with a better and deeper. We'll be deepening your understanding. You'll be deepening your awareness of your team along these three dimensions. But for now, start fleshing this out. You can use the printable handout or do it on a pad of paper or in a journal. As soon as you've got some thought, thoughts down, go on to the next lecture.